Hey guys, I've been working on a project for a while now and it's time to share it with you. What I wanted was to find a way to create machines you can interact with and building these machines should be very intuitive, using only very few and simple building blocks, but at the same time allowing powerful and interesting machines to be made. In fact, with this program I developed, I believe most machines you can imagine can be created in some way and yet you can pretty much learn how to use the whole program in half an hour. I even managed to create a programming system that does not involve actual coding, just connecting parts. It's all very visual. Now, what kinds of machine am I talking about? For instance, you can create a clock like this one and set it running, stop it, change the time, start again. All the behavior is done by these parts in the background, with no code. I won't explain it right now, but these control parts are really cool. The mechanical circuit on the left is the programming equivalent of a while loop. Or take this piano, it actually plays. All I did was to create a single white key like this, which was simple, then I duplicated it and changed it to create the whole piano. Next, I want to make it possible to press a button, record a performance and play it back. I have an idea of how to do it, I just have to test it. Another example is this simple drawbridge. Is that what they are called? You know what I mean, they live to let boats pass. I also created this mixer, it's just a chamber with balls and you can mix them. There is a front wall too, that's why the balls don't fall out, but it's hidden in another layer so you can see the inside. The whole coordinated motion is controlled by this mechanical circuit in the front. Or take this combination safe door. It locks and unlocks with the press of the button. And if it's locked, you can't move it. And it only unlocks if the combination is this. If it's something else, like this, it won't unlock. Notice the lights. I'm quite proud of this one. When I started creating it, I was sure I would need to use programming. Which is possible by the way, I'll show you how later. But it wasn't necessary. And yet, I mean, it's a working combination lock for Pete's sake. These are just a few test machines I've created to show you what's possible with this program. I'll create tutorial videos on how to build each of these machines from scratch soon. And after that I have a whole list of machines to create next. So how does it work? One thing I really focused on was to make the interface as intuitive and fast to use as possible. I'll create a new video explaining the interface in detail soon, but here I'll just give you an overview so don't worry about understanding everything. You can rotate and move around this environment. There are modes, so for instance on add mode you can add one of these objects like this block, this track path, or a button. On edit mode you can do simple things like scale objects and move them. Notice that objects move relative to their parent, which makes things much easier to manage. I made sure everything can be done with shortcuts and the shortcuts were very memorable to take advantage of muscle memory. After using it for a while you don't have to think about how to do things, you just think about what you want to do and your fingers do the work. For instance, modes start with ALT. Alt A for add mode and inside add mode single letters select each part B for block, C for cylinder, T for track, Alt E for edit mode, S for scale, M for move and so on. And if you do use the buttons the system tells you what the shortcut is so you can learn quickly. 
although you can disable that if you want. Each part has a value associated with it, and what this value means depends on the part. For instance, if I create a track path and place a wagon on it, the wagon can move on the path and the value of the wagon is the distance from the starting point. This track is one unit long, let's make this one two units long. Now you can see the value of the wagon correlates to its position. A track by itself also works like a motor, and its value goes from 0 to 1. For other parts, what the value means is even simpler. The button has value 1 when pressed, 0 otherwise. The lamp is on when the value is 1, off when it's 0. But how do you control the value of these parts? Mostly with graphs, which is why we have this graph chip part. If I create a graph for a track that goes from 0 to 1 like this, and activate the chip, the track rotates full circle once. To make the track rotate halfway, stop, then come back, the graph would look like this. Ok, so now you know how to build things and make them move, but how do you make decisions? How is the programming of these machines done? That's why this motherboard part exists. It basically just connects the values of various parts using some logical gates. For instance, if I connect this button to this lamp, their values will be the same, so when I press the button, the lamp goes on and off as expected. If we want to turn on the lamp when the button is not pressed, we can just use a NOT gate that turns a 1 into a 0 and vice versa. Here you go. Or I could use a button to activate the chip like this. A chip activates when its value changes from 0 to 1. You can also test for conditions using this part I haven't talked about yet, a probe. A probe's value is 1 when it's touching another probe and 0 otherwise. Now we can activate a chip only if a certain condition is met. For instance, if I create a quick door. Ok, this chip opens the door, this one closes it, and the button is connected to the first one, so pressing the button just opens the door. Now, if I place a probe here, it will be 1 when the door is closed, because it will be touching this other probe, and 0 when opened, so I can use it to decide which chip to activate with the button. If I create connections like this, using AND and NOT gates, the button will open or close the door, depending on the door state. That's basically it, I've shown you pretty much all there is to creating all the machines I've shown you in the beginning, and many more. My next video will show you how everything works in detail, but you have the basic idea now. And if you can't create some machine even with the tools I've shown you, all is not lost because I believe in good defaults, not limitations. You don't have to use coding, but if you want to, you can. You can have a motherboard follow a script like this. This one just duplicates the behavior of the door we made, but it could do anything you like. I'm even planning a system that allows outside control, so if you want to create a whole AI powered program in your favorite programming language and then control things on the inside, you will be able to. I also haven't implemented it yet, but I'll create a part on add mode that can load textured 3D objects as custom parts. I'll make a tutorial on it later, but the basic idea is, if you really want to, you can create a part in Blender, say, like this, set the colors or textures, and load and place it on your machine as if it was any of the parts you have already seen. This part, for instance, could be used in a more sophisticated combination lock. Speaking of future plans, I took a break from working on the program itself while I made the website and created the YouTube channel, but I'll get back to it soon, and I have lots of ideas. Let me show you some of the things I want to do next, or that are almost done. One is what I'm calling avatar mode. 
I already have the code for an avatar walking around, climbing on things, jumping, etc. from an earlier project that I didn't finish. Imagine you create an elevator machine with buttons to go up and down or that drawbridge. On avatar mode, you will be able to use those machines as an avatar. You can create a whole world and put yourself in it. In the future, I even imagine creating these shared worlds where people can create their own games inside. Imagine constructing a castle but you only want your friends to visit, so you create a door with a combination lock. People find a way to create a siege engine to throw them over the wall to evade your defenses. So you create a ball throwing weapon to fend off invaders. The possibilities are endless. Another idea is a gear mode, where you can pair two tracks and say what the conversion ratio is, say 2 to 1, and the system will draw the gears with the appropriate size, and from then on, moving one track moves the other. It can be useful and I think it looks great. Another thing I already implemented but had to disable for this version is a cable system. You can push and pull this block and this other one will move. And I can add a stiffness constant to the cable so that they act as springs. I'm sure a lot of fun stuff can be created using springs. Speaking of this version of the program, you can get it at mockmechanics.com. The link is in the description. The website that I'm creating to support this program and the people using it is only half done, so there will be a forum at some point and I'll create the full documentation too. But for now you can look at the gallery or send me a message with ideas, bug reports, criticisms or whatever you like. So if you liked all this, download the program, try it out, it's freely available and if you want to learn how to use it, the next video should be out soon, so like and subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you guys on the next one.